Hey, Airzu fans, it's Troy coming to you from our FM2 Wildcat that we are restoring here at the Air Zoo. The FM2 Wildcat was on the bottom of Lake Michigan for 68 years. It was December 28th of 1944 when young ensign William Forbes was taking off for the third time that day in Lake Michigan as he was training to become a pilot in World War II. As Ensign Forbes was taking off, according to him, his engine just sputtered and it stopped. He was too close to the end of the deck of the aircraft carrier to be able to stop his airplane. So he tried to start it, he tried to start it again and couldn't. He ended up going off the front edge of the deck of the aircraft carrier, which ultimately then ran him and his airplane over. He remained in the cockpit as the aircraft carrier went over him. Now remember, these aircraft carriers, as we said in a segment earlier, were actually cruise ships that took people and cargo up and down the Great Lakes. So they had a large paddle wheel on it. So as Ensign Forbes was in his cockpit underneath as the ship was going over him, the tail of the aircraft got caught in the paddle wheel and sheared off. And you can see we've got a couple of pieces here. Well, but before I get to that, I should probably tell you that our hero, Ensign Forbes, survived the crash. As the ship went over him, he was then able to get out of his cockpit. He was saved, and believe it or not, by the way, I should probably mention, as December 28th of 1944, it was really quite cold that day, and the water outside of Chicago was very cold. But nevertheless, our hero ended up flying in the war a little bit later on. So even after this accident, uh, he still mustered up the courage to be able to fight for our country again. So this aircraft, as I mentioned, was broken in half. So our team of 75 restoration volunteers had to do something that really isn't done by any aircraft manufacturer around the world, which is, hey, let's build the front, let's build the back, and then figure out how we can connect the two pieces. So it was really quite a challenge, and our team was really up to that challenge. Our group came up with this idea to create this giant rotisserie that you see behind me. This then allowed, as they were beginning to connect the tail and the fuselage, to be able to work on it 360 degrees at one time, continuing to turn it to ensure that gravity wasn't going to stress any of these pieces uh, in any way that was gonna destroy the structural integrity of what was happening in the middle of this fuselage here. And so they looked around, found that none of these had been created before, so they invented this piece themselves. And it was really quite phenomenal, especially the day that we were able to reconnect the tail with the fuselage. So the structure continues to be built here. You can see all of these stringers going along. You can see lots of wood in here. No, there was no wood on these aircraft, but it is this wood that is being used to ensure that the shape remains the way it needs to be. Eventually, all of this wood will be gone as they continue to skin the fuselage as they started from the back. And you can see all of these different stations that they're going to be doing eventually having this as one structural unit. We've been working on this airplane since 2013. We still have a few years to go, but we would love for you to come down when the Air Zoo opens back up, check out this restoration center, come talk to our amazing volunteers about how they were doing this wonderful work in restoring this FM2 Wildcat to their former glory. And we would love to see you not only come and chat with us, but maybe even pop a rivet or two or do a little bit of work on some of our projects. So we can't wait to see you again soon. Hope you're all well.